People think I don't like Nas, right? I I don't. You know what it is to play this. I was more hurt about Nas than uh, it turned like the way I express myself is easier for me to express it angry. So it comes off like that when I start talking about him because I got frustrated about the situation. Um, you and Fifty Cent have kind of somewhat gone back and forth. I know you had things to say at Central Park, and uh, he's had some. He's apparently had things to say about you and Khalees on the new unheard Piggy Bank record. Um, do you have any comments on that? Um. No, nah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, 50 Cent is, a, is, is comes up underneath me too. You know what I'm saying? He was with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have a history, yeah. and um, obviously, he was, you know, going through some things and felt that I was against him, and I felt he was against me. So words are exchanged here and there. But nah, man, my thing is, I'm, I'm all good, and he's he's fairly a new artist. You know what I'm saying? I, my goals are different from his goals. We're right. two different kind of guys. And I think we just hold it down. Yeah. We both hold it down. And this goes for any MC. I'm not into calling names no more. I'm, yeah. been, I'm, I'm past that. But you know, if I go in, I go in. If somebody really gotta call me out, you know, I, you know what I bring to the table. You know my record. If you want to watch the uncut and uncensored version of 50 Cent vs. Nas, What Happened, make sure you check out my Patreon. Subscriptions start out as low as $5 a month. You get two-day early access to videos, a shout-out in the beginning of every video, and exclusive Patreon-only videos coming soon. The link is in the description. Thanks for the support, and enjoy the video. 50 Cent and Nas have a storied history that dates all the way back to the late 90s, before 50 Cent even signed his deal with Shady Aftermath. But eventually, their relationship would turn into a beef. Today, we break down the entire history of 50 Cent versus Nas. Let's get into it. In the mid to late 90s, a Queens rapper by the name of Nas would take the rap game by storm after dropping his all-time classic debut album Illmatic on April 19th, 1994. Nas would follow up on July 2nd, 1996, when he dropped his second studio album, It Was Written. During this time, a guy named Curtis Jackson, otherwise known as Boo Boo, would begin pursuing his rap career. After rapping in his homie's basement, Curtis would be introduced to Jam Master J of Run DMC, who was establishing his label Jam Master J Records. Jam Master J mentored Curtis, teaching him how to write in song format and make records. After that, Curtis would begin recording songs under the rap name 50 Cent. Eventually, in 1999, he would leave JMJ Records and sign with Columbia Records, which at the time, one of their biggest artists was Nas. The Trackmaster sent 50 Cent to a studio in upstate New York, where he would begin working on his debut studio album, Power of the Dollar. 50 Cent needed a song that got everyone's attention, so he decided to drop his commercial debut single, How to Rob, on August 10th, 1999. And on this track, he dissed the entire rap game at the time. One person he didn't diss, though, was Nas, who actually took a liking to 50 Cent. Nas would invite 50 Cent and Tony Ayo on his promo tour for his fourth studio album, Nostradamus, so it was clear that Nas was trying to help 50 come up as they formed a friendship. 50 even gave props to Nas on his diss track towards Ja Rule called Your Life's on the Line, which dropped on October 12th, 1999. Now here's a list of MCs that could kill you in a boss. 50, um, Jay Z and Nas. Unfortunately, on May 24, 2000, 50 Cent was shot nine times outside of his grandmother's house in South Jamaica. Shortly after getting shot, Nas and 50 would begin cooking up music in the studio. It's heavily rumored that 50 Cent was actually in the studio with Nas while he was recording his legendary diss track on Jay-Z called Ether. 50 Cent would make his comeback to music on April 26, 2002, when he dropped his debut mixtape, Guess Who's Back. And on this mixtape, he had two tracks that actually featured Nas. It would be in 2002 that the seeds for this beef would be planted. Let's backtrack to January 23rd, 2001. Jennifer Lopez dropped her single, I'm Gonna Be Alright. On the Trackmasters remix, 50 Cent was actually a feature on the song. This version of the song never actually released. Instead, Trackmasters and Irv Gotti replaced 50 Cent with Nas on this song, and on June 10th, 2002, the official remix was released of I'm Gonna Be Alright featuring Nas. Now this is where this beef would officially begin, because according to Nas, 
50 felt a certain way that Nas did the song with J-Lo and felt 50 held the grudge from that point. But according to 50, he wasn't frustrated that he did the song. He was just frustrated that Nas didn't call him and said that Nas didn't do anything to actually help Bravehearts or anyone around him too much. 50 also didn't like the fact that Nas was hanging around Irv Gotti, who was CEO of Murder Inc., which was the label Ja Rule signed to, and 50 was bitter enemies with Irv. So 50 didn't like that Nas was hanging around Murder Inc. Nas, yo, you let me tell you something. Look, people think I don't like Nas, right? I, I don't... You know what it is to play this? I was more hurt about Nas than uh, it turned like the way I express myself is easier for me to express it angry. So it comes off like that when I start talking about him because I got frustrated about the situation. Cause he, I mean, like with the whole the whole crew, like he was in position, cool, for real. You know he, this. He used to he used to beat you up though, crazy. Yeah, he was. I mean, early on, and I'm like, yo, I rock with him. Like he took me on a, on a promo tour, first tour. Word. He took me on, um... Wow, Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Yeah, yo was I with was me. I was there, too. Wow. It was just me and Yeah, yo, before... This is before Banks came to picture anything. You know what I'm saying? He took me on his tour. We just riding with him. Everything good. Like, I seen some things that was... Like, instead of him actually vibing with everybody that was on the tour, like, he would have his, his book off to the side. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's his vibe, though. He keeps yeah, like, himself. That's how he is. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't understand how, when he was in position, how he didn't do anything to set up his crew. You feel what I'm saying? Like, the Bravehearts, like the town, Jungle, Wiz, Horse, all of them. And we was all in, on the same van together. We wasn't even on a bus. Right, right. Like, vans together, riding. And it was like, I was honored to even be allowed on his tour at that point, because I didn't have anything by how to rob at that point. You know, he just said, yo, that record feels crazy. It reminds me of when I came out. He had options. He could have took Nature. Could have took other, you know, there's other artists around it with AZ. Fox, he could took whoever he wanted to take with him, you know, and he said, no, he wanted me to come with him. So I went with him. Did he have the, was the firm still popping back then? The firm, I don't think he liked anything that was a conflict to him shining as Nas. You feel what I'm saying? And, then, and that's my assumption after the fact. Because I didn't understand why he didn't utilize all that at that point. Like, even after Uchi Wilder came out, they had a smash, man. But you know what? Originally, he wasn't on that record. The record that when they gave me up on a mixtape, Nas wasn't on that record. Right. He hopped on at the end and they shot the video for it. But that's when it was working. It was working when they gave it to you, Clue. And then he got on the joint because it was working. And then he didn't travel with him to support it. What's <coughs> oh, the see, difference? I, I don't know about All right, ask, ask me this. What's the difference between Bravehearts and June? It's momentum. When I had the momentum, I worked them in, Clue. I could have sold a blank CD after Get Rich or Die Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That's the real deal, man. And then after we get going, like they was established, they got groomed. Yeah, he was already groomed because he was with me even then. So when he's locked up and he's going through, yeah, I sounded crazy on a mixtape. Just on a mixtape alone, yeah, I sounded like you know yeah, what I mean. Like we was already veterans because yeah. we was like we was getting bumped, knocked around. If White Don's had that energy, he could have helped them get into a decent space, financially, before going, you know what, y'all on your own. He didn't really give them that support and then said, now nah, y'all on your own. I still talk to Lord Spunk, the, like, the the people who was there that wasn't a part of the music. Right, right. You know what I mean? And we, I mean, we all good. It's just, I just, I didn't see him doing, like, he just looked, and then his, his, his character, his, have you, have you seen him and spoke to him? No, nah, not, not at all. Nah. So not since then. And I haven't seen him. Wow. Yeah, like I, I had a conversation. Look, he wanted to do the same thing that Jay did to him with Carmen, to Mega, because he called me to get Holly number in Queens, Circle Five, and Mega was messing with it at the time. He was tight at Mega at the time. He sent me to go get the number. I went through there, and then after that, it was like like he called me like three times that night to tell me what was going on. You know what I'm saying? And then when I did the Jennifer Lopez joint. I did a remix with Jennifer because the first thing I did is Puffy called me back to help him with the make this money. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And after I did that, then um, I was working with Jennifer. I did a remix on one of her joints. And then Irv started crying and Donnie and them and was like, yo, what are you going to do? This guy's exactly what he says he is on these records. You know what I mean? Why you want to do business? What happens when he gets mad and he does this something to Jennifer? So he was kind of using wow. me against me at the time. And then 
they pulled back off and he was like, use Nas. Nas just beat Jay-Z. They just went through the ether. That little back and forth thing. You know what I'm saying? And then Nas ended up doing the record. I wasn't mad that he did the record. I was mad that he didn't call me. You called me three times to, to ask me about Mega's girl. And then you didn't call me when you did the record over. After this incident, no shots were taken at each other on Wax just yet, as 50 would go on to be signed to Shady Aftermath, and on January 1st, 2003, G-Unit dropped their mixtape Automatic Gunfire, and on the track Bang Bang, 50 Cent name drops Nas's girlfriend at the time, singer Khalees. Remember Patrice, she looked like Khalees. On February 6, 2003, 50 Cent dropped his debut studio album, Get Rich or Die Tryin'. On this album is one of his most iconic songs called Many Men. Not many people know that this beat was originally supposed to go to Nas. Nas's former A&R at the time would confirm this in an interview saying, in quotes, 50 Cent's song Many Men was a Nas track first. He actually vocaled it. He was developing another artist named Nayshawn. He had to massively impress Nas. If Nas started something, he would add his vocal to it and see if Nas would be impressed enough to keep it. Nas didn't finish that track. That track was just a track that he just fell out of love with. Since Nas didn't want the beat, Nicholson asked if he can give it to 50 who was blowing up at the time. 50 also mentioned Nas on the song High All The Time, saying that he's going at Nas and Jay-Z for the throne as the king of New York. If David could go against Goliath with a stone, I could go at Nas and Jigga both for the throne. Now, many people think 50 Cent just dissed Nas for no reason, but that's actually not the case. In 2004, Nas was performing in New York Central Park, and while he was on stage, he would actually diss 50 Cent when he would thank the crowd for coming out to support real street hip hop and not that 50 Cent. Nas would continue to diss 50 Cent on stage on multiple occasions throughout the year. Eventually, 50 got wind of this, so on September 19th, 2004, Lloyd Banks dropped his mixtape Mo Money in the Bank Volume 3 Cashing In, and on the track Burying Bodies featuring 50 Cent, 50 actually disses Nas, saying that Nas don't want it with him. Yeah, I heard that nigga Nas talk about me. It don't worry with me. Can't even fuck my n See you hear this nigga Banks? Oh my god, baby. Ah! On March 3rd, 2005, 50 Cent dropped his second studio album, The Massacre. And on the track, Piggy Bank, he took shots at Nas, mocking him for getting a tattoo of his then-wife, Khalees, who made the song Milkshake. 50 also calls him a sucker for love. Khalees said a milkshake, bring all the boys to the yard, and Nas went and tattooed the bitch on his arm. Nas would get wind of this, so he would continue dissing 50 on stage, hinting that he's got something in store for 50 Cent. Sometime after that, Nas recorded a diss track on 50 Cent called Don't Body Yourself, which was never officially released, but was leaked. They say Jada defeated him, Joe too street for him. What's next? I guess it's for Nas to eat the room. Y'all are waiting to MC burial. So they talk about family members. Like I can't point out your grandma. Damn, he was my man like two dogs. Don't make me change your body frame to blue fall. On May 7th, 2005, the game dropped the Ghost Unit mixtape, where he would do a remix of Nas's Don't Body Yourself, as both of them were beefing with 50 Cent at the time. Nas wouldn't stop there. He dropped another diss track on 50 Cent called Spastic in late 2005. Now, I couldn't actually find any audio to this track at all, so I'll just read some of the lyrics to you. I observe this short-term N-word Curtis. His soul he let record execs purchase. They were nervous, but now they're wordless. This bitch 50, I spit shit that rips out his curvix. Truth is, you only dropped one hot LP. Smell me, now you N-words wanna dead me. This is the 10th shell I'm inserting through your dome. Sitting on the throne, yet still I murk you with the chrome. I got gold and platinum, test your stamina. You getting manicures, thug life ain't glamorous. You N-words is phony, dissing everybody on Jaws roster. When you ain't hip-hop N-word, pop is your proper genre. 50 would finally respond on October 1st, 2005. 
the Junior Radio 14 Back to Business mixtape dropped. And on the track, Just a Touch, 50 Take Shots at Nas. On the radio, they saying me and you are item. Nas fall in love with me, I just like them. A couple weeks later, on October 22nd, 2005, the G-Unit Radio Part 15 Are You a Window Shopper mixtape dropped. And on the cover in the background, you could see 50's enemies at the time, in which Nas was in the background window shopping. On this tape, 50 dropped the diss version of his hit song Window Shopper and dissed Nas on it. Nas is a window shopper. Man, it's when you see me right by. In 2006, Nas was gearing up to drop his 8th studio album, Hip Hop Is Dead. After announcing the title of the album in May, Nas would sit down with Sway on MTV News. And Sway asked if Nas had any 50 cent disses on this album. When you and Jay went at it, that kind of put a new kick in the game. Even when 50 was going at it with Ja and everybody Absolutely. started going, you know, the dissing kind of served as, it kind of sparked a lot of interest. You know, Absolutely. And then truth be told, from the days of Pac to J to 50, you've always had that kind of spark in your career and you've always responded. On this album, is there any response to the recent disses that you've gotten from artists like 50 or, or, or Cam and Jim Jones and these guys? Are you going to body a crew on this album? Nah, nah, nah. See, the stuff that I do say some things I'm, I'm struggling with I'm trying to uplift the, okay. the, uni the unity mm -hmm. so if I if I feed into it we know what that is mm -hmm. you know what I when I battled that was one of the biggest if not the biggest battle in rap music so we know it gave them a whole platform to stand on so they're standing on a platform I built mm -hmm. and in some of the disses they're saying um, you know some of the stuff that I said if you listen to cams thing it was just pieces of ether put together mm -hmm. you know so they're standing on a platform that I helped build and um so you you have to make a certain amount of albums yet to be on in the ring with me mm -hmm. you you have to have survived a lot you know what I mean mm -hmm. you can't be an album or two albums or you went platinum one time and you may have performed in front of 6,000 people twice in your life. You can't do that. That's not that's not about. Mm -hmm. You got to be to get in the ring with me. You got to be somebody in my weight class. You can't can't be, you know, you can't fight like that. So that's not really a battle. Um, but there is spankings that I could do. You know what I'm saying? Like lyrical verbal assaults that I could do mm -hmm. on some of you clowns mm -hmm. out there. But um um, honestly, the take on this album is like really more of a, un a, a unity thing. You a know what I'm saying? Okay. So um, I can't really know. I don't really know at this this moment right now if I'm going to let those records fly where I do answer a thing or two. But maybe, maybe not. Okay. But you definitely got them in stock if you need them. Yeah. Okay. Later that year, on September 8, 2006, the G-Unit Radio Part 22 Hip Hop Is Dead mixtape was released, and the name of the mixtape itself was a mock to Nas's upcoming album. On the Hip Hop Is Dead intro, there's a voiceover giving an R.I.P. to all of 50's enemies, and one of those names was Nas, and they even mentioned his classic song, Made You Look. Rest in peace to the poor Nas! Made you look! Things will go quiet, but just a year later, on September 11, 2007, 50 Cent dropped his third studio album, Curtis, and on the track, Fully Loaded Clip, he takes direct shots at Nas and his wife, Khalees. My Nas was telling Khalees, I love you, boo. I was shining my nine. You know how I do. Nas got wind of this, so on July 15, 2008, Nas dropped his ninth studio album, Untitled, and on the track, Queens Get the Money, he goes at 50 Cent. Mentioning when 50 Cent said he would retire if Kanye West outsold him. My assignment since he said retirement, hiding behind a mal in the chronic, get rich but dies rhyming. 50 wouldn't respond until a year later on June 16th, 2009. 50 Cent dropped his mixtape War Angel LP. And on the track Cream 2009, he does a play on Wu Tang Clan's song Cream, but he instead says Queens get the money instead of Cream get the money, which is a reference to Nas's diss towards him. This beef went quiet for a couple years due to 50 leaving the rap game. In April 2010, Nas and Khalees filed for divorce, 
where Nas had to pay her $47,249 in back child support and $40,454 in back spousal support. Nas also had to pay $10,000 a month in spousal support off the $300,000 he owed Khalees and 90% of Khalees' legal fees that amounted to $155,787. And lastly, Nas had to pay $48,549 to cover her accounting expenses. In 2011, 50 would return to making music, and he would drop several songs promoting his new sleek audio headphones. On February 3rd, 2011, 50 Cent dropped the track called Old 2003 Ferrari, and on the song, he took shots at Nas, Referencing his recent divorce with Khalees and all the expenses he had to pay. She ate for night, but don't keep her. Ask Nas, Khalees was the illest eater. Yeah. The next year, on July 17, 2012, Nas dropped his 10th studio album, Life Is Good. And on the track, Queen Story, is Nas's version of 50 Cent song, Ghetto Quran, the song that actually got 50 shot. Nas drops names like Black Just, who was 50 Cent's mentor growing up. After that, this beef would completely die down until a couple years later on June 1st, 2014 at Hot 97's Summer Jam, Nas performed, and after a set, he brought out 50 Cent. The two of them embraced to officially squash their beef and perform together on stage. Buddy, I was just like you. Keep getting money. Buddy, I was just like you. I get money. Buddy, I was just like you. <laughs> Fast forward to August 2020, Nas did an interview with Amazon Music. And when he was asked about 50 Cent, he says that he's wild talented. He also talks about bringing him out at Summer Jam 2014. Someone wanted to know, uh, were you going to bring 50 out? No, bringing 50 out at, at uh, Summer Jam 2014. I remember that. I was there. So they wanted to know, you know, how, how was that experience? That was good. That was good. Um, I think me and 50, we, we, we haven't done a Summer Jam in a while. Him even longer than me, probably. Um, that was good because it was Queens on the stage, Queens, New York. And um, that was a great vibe, you know, um, to, to, to bring um, my man who used to hang with me all the time. I mean, studio vibes. We went on tours together. Me and Fifth, we go, we go super back. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. um, I remember 50 wilding out <laughs> on the tours, like, you know, it, it getting into drama in different states and everything. I'm like. Is this kid gonna make it? This kid is like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yo, he's ready to get at anything moving. I'm like, you know, you do know you you on stage, you got an opportunity to, you got an incredible talent, my dude. Like, don't I just seen it in him that fire, you know. I always saw his talent and respected his talent. Um, so yeah, so to come back full circle on that and be on Summer Jam was cool. Yeah, it was cool. All right. Two years later, in June 2022, it was revealed that Nas was co-directing Showtime's upcoming Supreme Team documentary, which sparked rumors that the beef with 50 Cent would be reunited due to his past with Prem. Later that year, in October, 50 did an interview with Hot 97, where he would reveal that he has no issues with Nas working on the film, and he would go on to give Nas his flowers and says that he loves Nas. A couple months later, in February 2023, 50 Cent was celebrating the 20 year anniversary for his album, Get Rich or Die Tryin'. He sat down with Billboard for an interview where he would reveal that he will be collaborating with Nas for his upcoming album, King's Disease 4. After that, nothing else happened between them as they managed to resolve their issues. In my opinion, this beef was a miscommunication between both of them. So it's nice to see them work with each other moving forward.